Checking NVIDIA's website today reveals more performance claims than we had a couple days ago at the launch at CES. We now have new games tested, new results, but once again, we have to be very careful to filter for what's comparing multi-frame generation frame rates versus non-multi-frame generation frame rates. Because as I've established in recent videos, if two video cards achieve the same frame rate, but one of them is generating more of those frames than others, that means that they don't have the same responsiveness, meaning they are not really an apples to apples comparison, although multi-frame generation is still an interesting feature. I just don't like the idea of stacking it up as direct performance in a bar chart. So we have new claims for the uh, 5090, 5080, 5070 Ti, and 5070, but for the most apples to apples performance numbers, we should be looking at Resident Evil 4, which is a ray tracing test, although it doesn't use a massive amount of ray tracing. And then we also have Horizon Forbidden West. This one is a non-ray tracing result, which I believe is the first non-RT result we've seen in any of NVIDIA's performance claims that aren't at least also involving multi-frame generation and all that. Uh, the other results though, again, using DLSS4 versus cards that don't have DLSS4 multi-frame generation, I don't like the, the non-apples to apples comparison. So this is only two results. However, just a reminder that we already had two other results. This was Far Cry 6 using ray tracing but no DLSS, and Plague Tale Requiem that was using DLSS and ray tracing, but was uh, not using the multi-frame gen versus non-multi-frame gen. They were both using the normal frame gen, so it was at least an apples to apples comparison. So with all of that in mind, we can now combine some results to get a bit more information. Now, on these new slides, um, uh, again, I, I, was, I was about to get into my pixel counting. However, I was like, you know what, somebody's probably already done it. Turns out Computer Base has already done it. This is a German language outlet, so I have uh, set my browser to automatically translate it into English, so excuse any oddities that come up from that, and all my sources will be linked in the video description. Uh, but when you scroll down far enough here, they're talking about all the uh, uh, you know, increases to the, the stats of the cards and other features and whatnot. But then they get into these performance claims. And in these particular results, they're showing that the 5090 versus 4090 is showing a 33% performance increase. A 5080 versus 4080 is showing a 15% performance increase. 5070 Ti versus 4070 Ti is showing a 20%. And 5070 versus 4070 is a 20%. But to be clear, that's only using these two results from the new performance claims. But remember, we already had some performance results from these older performance claims that I talked about in a previous video. And that means we actually now have four results to go off of. Now, these results are still first party chosen by NVIDIA, which means there is a very good chance these could be cherry picked. So this could still be overrepresenting the generational performance gains. But I think we've got some interesting results here as well. First of all, let's look at these overall charts, again, focusing in on these two things on the left. So again, the 5090 is showing about a 33% performance gain in both of these games. Uh, the 5080, on the other hand, you can tell that these performance gains are pretty consistent with each other, but a smaller performance jump overall. Uh, that's where we were getting that about 15% performance gain uh, in those games coming from computer bases analysis of the uh, you know pixel count on those charts. Uh, if we go to the 5070 uh, Ti versus the 4070 Ti, uh, here we see pretty consistent results, although not completely identical, and computer bases averaging those out to a 20% gain. And then if we go ahead and take a look at the 5070 results, again, these are fairly consistent. Horizon Forbidden West looking a little bit better than the Resident Evil 4 results. And again, that pixel counting out to about 20% performance gain. The other interesting thing that uh, computer base is bringing up is also the increase in shaders. And how does that correlate with the increases in the benchmarks? Because the 5090 gets 33% more shaders and 33% better in those two benchmarks. 5080 versus 4080 only has an 11% shader advantage generationally and is getting about a 15%. So a bit better than the shader increase, but not a lot better than the shader increase. 5070 Ti versus 4070 Ti, 17% more shaders, 20% more performance. But the one that seems the odd one out here is the 5070 versus 4070, where we're only seeing a 4% 
increase in shaders, but a 20% increase in the benchmarks. Now, one thought on that is the fact that, well, shaders aren't the only story uh, involving performance, and there is the move from GDDR6X to GDDR7 memory. So the increase in memory bandwidth could be particularly helpful, especially in certain games. Are we getting uh, specific examples of games where that's over representative to how helpful it is compared to a wider sampling of games? We don't know, but perhaps uh, that could be explaining some of these performance gains um, versus just the increase in shader cores. Now, I've done a bit of analysis myself to then uh, put all of this together. So if we take the uh, previous results of Far Cry 6 with ray tracing, Plague Tale uh, with ray tracing, and DLSS, uh, the mean of those results uh, was all showing around a 35% generational performance gain. Whereas these new results with Resident Evil 4 with ray tracing and Horizon Forbidden West uh, DLSS but no ray tracing, here we're seeing uh, still about a 33% uh, for the 5090 versus 4090. So that one's staying fairly consistent to what we saw before. But the 5080 versus 4080 in these new results is only showing that 15% gain, whereas we saw almost a, a, a little over a 34% gain in those other results, which if you do the geo mean of the four results, it comes out to about a 24% generational uplift, which is noticeably less than what we were seeing um, when it was just based on these initial two results. The 5070 Ti versus 4070, that should say Ti, sorry, I guess I have a typo, in my, or actually I think I just needed to slide this bar over a little bit, sorry, that's 4070 Ti, eh, anyway. Um, uh, again, showing 20% in these results versus the 37 we saw in these, if we geomean that, well, we're at about a 28% performance uplift, which again is lower than what we're seeing based off of just those first two results and the 5070 versus 4070 initially showing 36% better in that, those initial uh, uh, two games, now only showing 20% better. And if you average the results, uh, we get to tw about a 28% performance increase. So in other words, we now have the, the uh, based off of all four games, this is where we're sitting, right? Uh, uh, off of all four games. So it's showing that the 4090 does, sorry, 5090 versus 4090 does show the largest performance gain, which is expected based on the, um, uh, based on the actual increase in hardware. Uh, whereas the 5080 versus 4080, uh, 4070 Ti versus, uh, sorry, 5070 Ti versus 4070 Ti and 5070 versus 4070, all showing more in the mid twenties. And again, how many games are gonna be more like this result compared to the ones more like this result. If these were cherry picking the best possible results and more stuff ends up uh, like this, then I don't know which of these are the actual reviews gonna end up looking more like. Now, the one thing is the 5090 seems, like I said, seems a lot more consistent. So that's where we're at with the latest performance numbers. And again, my best theory on why it's not necessarily lining up with the shader, core, uh, shader count increase uh, it has to do with the um, uh, shaders not being the, the whole story, right? Maybe some of this is memory bandwidth driven. I'll let you guys know if we get any more additional information ahead of launch uh, regarding performance claims here, but it certainly looks like we're reducing expectations versus that initial performance claim. And again, when you take out the multi-frame gen, those claims like the 5070 is gonna be as powerful as a 4090, but then we're only seeing this, eh. That's, uh, that's maybe not super duper amazing. That's what I've got for you guys today. I hope all of you have an excellent day.